All right, awesome. Well, thanks everyone uh, here for, for being here. Uh, I just want to get a, a show of hands. Who's working on on DeFi dApps in, in this space, uh, in this room? Okay, cool. Um, and who's working on DeFi protocols in this room? Okay, cool. Um, I guess for the ones who have raised your hands, do you want to start here and just kind of shout? You know, what are you What are you guys working on? What type of protocols are you building and or trying to integrate? Just to get a sense of who's here. Maybe we can start on, on this side. And as an introduction, uh, I'm Felix. Uh, I am founder CEO of a project called Set Protocol. Uh, we create a protocol or a way for people to create, issue, and redeem baskets of cryptocurrencies. I mean, we can do it that way. Yeah, just, um, yeah, just, just so quickly. My name is Mona, I'm a uh, founder and CEO of Melonport. We're building decentralized asset management protocol, which allows you to set up and manage uh, investment vehicles of all kinds. Hey, uh, my name is Vitaly. We are from uh, Blockboard. It's a uh, asset, uh, uh, digital, uh, digital asset uh, uh, new platform. Uh, built by uh, built on top of uh, Dharma protocol and Ampon protocol. Uh, so basically, if you like to borrow <coughs> tokens uh, in uh, such a way, you can do it in block. And uh, our main goal, I mean, our goal is to uh, integrate with trading platforms, and exchanges, and, uh, wallets, and deliver that credit really very easily. So, kind of with that, uh, I, I want to make this presentation like very interactive, and, and I want to make it um, not presentation, but this workshop something that's more collaborative, where we uh, kind of highlight some of the core issues with building out, you know, for the protocol teams. How do we get developer adoption? What are some of the challenges that we're seeing on the developer, uh, the DAP developer side? Like, what are the, some of the pains with dealing with some of these protocols? Kind of putting that to light and. Hopefully, maybe we can start having a dialogue around how to start uh, finding solutions to some of these pains and problems that kind of we as a community are starting to face. Okay, well, that said, I uh, kind of want to potentially open it up to suggestions on you know, what are some of the pains that you're finding you know, as a protocol or a DAP developer in terms of you know, building for, for devs or actually using some of the tools that people are, are, are building. What is lacking? Uh, what is needed? And um, like, feel free to just kind of raise your hand and, and or just kind of start uh, start kind of providing your, your, your thoughts. Oh, well, I guess it kind of starts with the common terminology. I mean, you, you need to be um, sure that we speak of the same thing when we like, use some words in kind of kind of dictionary wise, right? So it all starts with the kind of a common language and what tools we really speak about. So, so the language itself is kind of the common okay. denominator. So the story is there. Kind of the language is, is important. So what when you talk about language, do you mean programming language or something like a DSL or what do you what do you mean? DSL, for instance, right? I mean that, that's something where um, so from my viewpoint, when, when I think of let's say financial contract, for instance, it's all in a way legal agreements, right? And and someone may speak of a Lending contract or something else. What, what does it exactly mean, right? It kind of embodies some, some, some logic there. Either. Sorry, do we have some markers here at Time Agents? Oh. So I want to start like, setting these down. So I don't necessarily mean programming language or something. Yeah, I really mean dictionary. Okay, so I guess some of the things that would be interesting is common language. It's really hard to 
to, to, to relay our message and we need to do it through the interface and the, still there is the metamask, I mean, transactions are mining and uh, figuring that most people don't understand. So uh, we are trying to abstract all this away and make it as you know, seamless as possible. Got it. So it seems like you know when trying to onboard uh, non-crypto native type of users, uh, abstracting away the, the the blockchain related elements becomes exactly. uh, pretty pretty uh, key to getting getting your adoption. That makes sense. Related to common language, I think having agreed upon standards definitely helps. Yeah. Yeah. That's really yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. So, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure. It's just really good. What are some of the standards that you were thinking about? Can you um, go more detail? I, I guess some standards around security tokens, because that, that's a lot of we do. We do standards around Oracle related to the previous panel, things like that. <coughs> you can get pretty robust and how you think about it. And the future of the term ERC20, I mean, everyone knows what we talk about when we say ERC20, right? Because mm -hmm. you know, we have a common understanding of yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I think that what has really allowed you know, the DeFi community to actually exist as it is today is because of the common interfaces of ERC-20 and ERC-721. I think that without that common interface, many of our protocols, including set protocol, DYDX, Dharma, like, could not exist uh, without or even OpenSea, right? Yeah. So I think that you know, to help push this forward, there probably would need to be more standards that get created. But at the same time, I think what we're starting to see is also standard bloat, right? <laughs> like there are so many EIPs and ERCs that are that are getting created, and it's hard to keep track of, of you know what is actually happening, what is getting adoption. So uh, how do we balance? You know, how do we aggregate? around like the EIPs that we care most about, and what are the ones that we matter, and how do we move forward and act on the ones that do. For example, you know, last year at DEF CON, uh, Fabian you know, worked, uh, kind of uh, you know, proposed the EIP 725, which is around identity, uh, which is a really uh, you know, elegant solution to you know, having a fully decentralized identity uh, type of standard. And nothing really happened with that standard until a project uh, actually kind of undertook it and started carrying under their wing and that project was origin. Now there's kind of an alliance around it and there seems to be a movement around the standard. So, um, you know, if certain standards are really important to people, the question is like, how do we move forward and make it and kind of start rallying around it and making it a reality? Well, I guess it's a good that um, when you say some standards are being picked up and others maybe not. I mean, it's a good place to decide on which standards should be maintained going forward. And those that are important and people are really using, those are probably the, the candidates for really keep, keep you collaborating on them. And others that kind of not really used will be really important to invest in. Yeah. But it's a collaborative effort. Of yours. Yeah, very, very clever. So, are there any standards that you guys wish to see that um, don't really exist yet? Or common language of, of how to speak about something that currently... Actually, I have one. It's the, the simplest one is actually protocol developers use different docket names and they name tokens in their uh, registries. That's pretty simple, but I mean, it would be nice to have uh, common token names. Is that related anywhere to like a token token registry? Maybe they did it. Right, exactly. That's it. Yeah, makes sense. Well, of course, I just mentioned that I'm working on so. But uh, so, so we're we're working on that standard that standard language for financial contract. And um, just to give you some background, we've been starting that work in 2013 or so, and we tried convincing mm -hmm. like traditional banks and, and traditional financial industry to take that up because it would make interoperability, it would enable interoperability, it would make every, everything like every interaction so much more efficient for them. But I guess just for because some of them may also profit from in transparency and, and, and the absence of standards, they weren't really interested. So I think here we are really better kind of developing tomorrow's financial ecosystem. Right? 
and and I would I would really like uh, to see uh, having a standard language for the financial contract, even yeah. whatever that may be. I mean, we have our own suggestion here. But yeah, I, I really like that idea, and that kind of leads me to think about you know when it comes to very generalized smart contracts. Uh, you know, we have uh, you know, dependencies that we use, such as OpenZip. Right. They provide a number of standard audited contracts that anyone can use right. uh, that provide you know, pretty standard functionality. And it might make sense you know, within kind of this DeFi community to have maybe like an open DeFi type of uh, open source repository where people can contribute uh, right. smart, like common smart contract uh, related uh, work into. Right? So if people are building Dutch auctions, for example, or which is a common construct used in multiple protocols. If people are you know, building a way to do repayments or, or bundle things, that might be something that we can all put into a common library that anyone can just import and, and you know and extend if, if needed. Those are my off chain standards we can add as well. So I think everything we talked right now to do with like smart contracts. <coughs> it feels like there's a lot of standards we can build around, even like our JavaScript libraries and stuff like that. Um, I mean, not obviously with, between de dependencies and things like that, but it feels like there's uh, <coughs> structures or, or interfaces that we have, have share a lot in common between different projects. If that's a way to kind of standardize stuff for developers as well. Yeah, so JavaScript library standardization. Uh, is there anything specifically? Nothing specific. I mean, the biggest thing is dependencies, obviously. But, uh, I, I mean, nothing specific jumps out, but even like the way they're structured, yeah. uh, function naming conventions, things like that. So you're not, you know, you would, with one project you're using camel case, another project also you're using like camel stores and things like that. Um, some sort of standardization there. That makes a lot of sense, and I think like one kind of personal example in which we've seen some sort of standardization kind of come about is uh, Zero X. The protocol really kind of took the lead with using TypeScript uh, as you know, the main language in their TypeScript libraries. In addition to writing the tests, they built a whole bunch of tooling around you know, ABI. You know, they built something called ABI Gen, which allows the creation of these uh, contract templates from uh, JSON blobs, which is really impressive and really cool tool that, that we use as well. And I think that there are a number of other projects that are starting to adopt TypeScript that are on the protocol side, including ourselves. I think Dharma has been spending a lot of time in TypeScript as well. And it turns out that the relayers that are building on top of Zero X are also adopting TypeScript a lot. So, and that has been a big part due to a lot of the kind of open source tooling that Zero X has put out. And I think that's a massive kind of uh, positive step in the right direction uh, for the industry. Uh, and sometimes it does take the lead of a particular project to kind of show like what the what a, a good way of doing something is. Mm -hmm. I guess open source availability is important here, but that really need really a field where that is kind of almost available. Right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's true, and I think that's. I mean, I made an argument. Uh, earlier uh, today that the nature of this industry is that it's, it's open source and open source allows projects to you know, kind of see how other people are doing things and thus ship faster uh, because solve problems only need to be solved once or you know, people don't need to reinvent the wheel every single time that they're building something. Except it's not, it's not totally working perfectly in the sense that because um, Dharma, Dharma set and Zero X are sharing a lot of this stuff, but we're not really sharing it in that we're like kind of um, like, like these re these repos aren't being um, shared in like a like like the um, Zero X repo is like a multi repo, right? So it, it, it'd be more it'd be interesting if like we all contributed to Zero X's like you know suite of libraries that we're using TypeScript. We've kind of like forked them essentially and then we maintain our own and then they start to diverge and then we kind of like patch them here and there with things. Yeah. Um, I actually think they're, I, I, like, the vision's definitely there, right? Because we are all like looking at each other's repos, like, riffing on each other. There, there's like a process breakdown though a little bit where like it would be cool to see some of these, like the ABI gen, be like kind of 
in siphoned into its own world, yeah. and then like all of us maintain it, yeah. and all of us are patching it. Um, so like, so it's like we, we we have a really good start. I think we can do yeah. room for improvement. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Like, as we upgrade to Web three, like one point oh, we also like forked the ABI gen as yeah. well and start using our own version of it. So it's like really funny to hear that we both forked like yes. their repo and are using our own versions of it. And I agree, like this can be something that can be maintained collectively. Uh, and you know, it doesn't have to live kind of just within the zero X realms, but at the same time, it requires like greater coordination uh, between uh, these projects, and there needs to be intent between these projects to, to work on this. And uh, so that so why are we uh, like um, forking it because of stability? We want to make sure that you not stability, <laughs> but there are certain you know, certain like for example, like their the, the repo that the, they have like doesn't. There's a certain thing that we need to change. Yeah. Because that is obviously another important aspect, right? Like stability. And, and we, it's still a young field kind of way, and I understand that there is certain, you know, concepts that may change over time. You want to make sure you have a like a, a stable reference that you can use. So that is I guess another important aspect that the project remains some kind of stability. Yeah, that's true. And yeah, speaking of that, like it becomes pretty challenging when different projects are using different dependencies as well to keep and keep it being stable. You know, some like previously, I mean, I think most projects use big number, and you, you know, projects are using different versions of big number. Some are using four or five. The latest version of big set of big number is seven. Uh, with the latest Web three one point like. Maybe I, I'm not sure, but maybe they prefer actually using bn.js as well, and other people are not using Web3 altogether and using ethers.js. So there's a whole kind of there's a disparate number of dependencies that people are using, and it's hard to reconcile that for let's say a DApp developer that is finding that they need their, their versions of big number are not matching up together, or they're like they have to. Oh, or the sub providers that they're passing in don't really work well together as well. So it's hard to reconcile that. And uh, I mean, the question then is like, how do we like how do we create standards around like dependencies uh, if people are to use our projects kind of together and build applications using a, a mix of these as well? Do you have ideas? I mean, one idea that I've been noodling on is having a shared kind of DeFi repository. So just like TypeScript has this you know, at types folder and within at types, there's all these different you know, projects in there. Like potentially we can have this shared like at DeFi uh, folder where projects can contribute their specific kind of JavaScript libraries into there. So when people you know, would NPM install their or they can specify like what they are, what they want to install and that can help you know, start to standardize things. I think that's one idea. Another idea is also, I mean, one, like having, starting the discourse and discussion around this, as well as having common documentation. I think that, you know, having kind of a DeFi focused uh, documentation where people can share, you know, some of the practices, the deployed contracts, etc., might be, and the dependencies they're using could be a good start. Uh, at least, you know, when people are picking between and shopping, which protocols they want to use, uh, that becomes a big consideration in, you know, in exploring like what are what is required to actually integrate some of these together. Yeah, so the type types are, the types is a good example. The, the issue or the catch there is Microsoft, right, is playing that role, or they're like financing, right, the people that maintain that repo. So who, how does how does how does zero x dharma because zero x dharma and set all have really similar stack. How how do we coordinate? I mean, like, who would, who would create the repo and maintain it? Yeah, that's a good question. And maybe, like, the responsibilities of DeFi in general are expanded, right? Right now, DeFi is a community you know, that generally kind of coordinates around, like, event, uh, hosting events like this, where we can grow awareness of DeFi. But in addition to that, maybe DeFi also uh, has a subsector of it in which is focused on creating technical standards and maintaining stuff like this. And that I think that is something that you know, greatly benefits the you know this ecosystem as a whole. I totally agree because I mean we have to be compared to like the legacy, let's say, financial world, we're really focusing on technology, right? And, and that's part of that 
interoperability and as well known standards really are key there. We always like to make you know to reference to let's say the success of the internet, right? It's only possible because you agree on, on all those standards that are used in the internet. So it's kind of the core asset to have that common technology and common standards for for the future of the system to kind of really take off. Yeah, uh, hundred percent and it seems that one of the core values of DeFi is the interoperability and much of the interoperability you know, kind of lies on the technical level and a lot of coordination uh, happens around kind of what is possible technically. Mm -hmm. So I think it is important to kind of start thinking about you know, on, the, on the code level, right? Like what is it that we can do to start kind of working together more, more, more cohesively? And I think you know the ideas around having a shared repo, starting to have at least discussions of how we can begin working together is a good step because, like you like you noted, you know, many of us are kind of riffing off of these repos without direct communication with one another, and maybe there's and that results in a lot of duplicate work. And we might as well just be just close source everything if we're all just reinventing the wheel <laughs> individually. <laughs> Yeah. How um, certain elements can be combined in a way that doesn't confound this issue is a full time job. Uh, sorry, so uh, how do you. Uh, so, uh, explaining to my audience yes. how, uh, you know, how various solutions can be combined to yeah. create something new yeah. is a full time job for someone to do. Oh, yeah. And normally it's executed on an individual project level. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a shared resource, and was, let's say, like two or three business data coming from uh, projects wanting to dedicate time to that. Yeah. Because educating the audience, you're also going to have a it's going to take time. Yeah. Um, and that time is certainly in kind of lots of half a year, I think, rather, yeah. rather than weeks. So are you seeing that there's a cost to you know, explaining to you know, non-technical stakeholders the importance of you know, developing time to kind of like maintaining this? It's, this not, it's not even developing time, it's also uh, just about explaining what's possible. Mm -hmm. right. <coughs> and also what I see a lot is it's very easy for a, for a developer to, uh, to get carried away with excitement of what's possible, what <laughs> X and Y. Yeah, yeah. They need somebody else from The legal side, the regulatory side, that obviously are joculous, but unfortunately it's part of the ecosystem yeah. that I explain to, to bring a different perspective, but also to explain to some technical audience with potential clients right. uh, what would be the benefit to them and what, would be, you know, what new interactions or new benefits can potentially right. yeah. be created from that. Yeah. Like, you know, it took me probably, let's say, a year to get. To get boards of, of, of too many pension funds educated on benefits of coaching applications yeah. outside of like administration. Right. 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 I mean, I, I totally hear you there. It takes a lot of time to communicate what's what's possible, and I think that the amount of time that it requires to communicate what's possible only grows when every single project is implementing things differently. <laughs> so, uh, so I mean, applying standards does help a little bit for that, and it's an investment for the team to help uh, you know, create kind of software that's interoperable. Or to, I mean, it is, it is part of on the developer's job to help communicate why it's important as well. Sure, but I also think that. A joint business, like a yeah, so yeah. or at least some standard materials to work on. Exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because ultimately, oh, yeah. yeah, there are only so many times that one can explain what you can do with that. Yeah, the, uh, exactly. I mean, that's that. That really, yeah, that leads to a really great point that you know, part of like what DeFi can be is also kind of a, a shared, you know, not just documentation, but you know, material marketing materials. On you know, what is it? What is DeFi? What does it mean? Like, what is possible? And what are we try? Like, I think that's. Something that's something new that we haven't actually thought of too much yet, and I think that that is like a step in the direction of you know, how do we get more stakeholders on board uh, with kind of this more this collective kind of dream that that we're in.
Yeah, I think that's a really good suggestion, actually. And that's like, that kind of leads us to you know, talking about, you know, what are the non-technical kind of ways in which we can start working better together and, and inoperate. And I think you know, marking materials, common marking materials is a really great uh, way to do that. Initiatives have been kind of spurred by zero x. Like, is there uh, is there a tie to the value of zero x in, in, in the community? And I mean, I can't speak to zero x for itself. I mean, right now they operate as a governance token to help, from what I understand, to facilitate upgrades. Uh, and other protocols who are utilizing or some of zero x protocols tech uh, aren't necessarily kind of involved in that or, or hold zero x tokens. Um, it seems more of the you know, projects going on zero X might be kind of more invested in what uh, what specific features zero X is building. Um, but the idea of something like a DeFi token is is very intriguing. I think many projects in the space have been pretty reluctant to add tokens into their protocols um, for for various reasons. Um, and uh, I mean, if there is a way to coordinate governance uh, around DeFi in a decentralized manner. Given that you know this is an open uh, kind of finance community, like that, we can explore that, and that could be pretty interesting. You heard it, you heard it here first, DeFi token. <laughs> <laughs> um, hold on, let me see if I have any other questions. Because we did go through a lot already, and I think that a number of these things. Uh, Okay, yeah, I think that we actually went through a lot of the, the, the answers to questions that I, I was thinking about. You know, one is how do we build more common language? Two is standards. Like, in what way can we standardize and start uh, having discussions around creating standards, whether it's token names, creating standard libraries? And I think a really great one we also added was marking materials. Um, so I guess the last question I, I, I kind of want to pose is, you know, how can we support, the, you know, given we start standardizing, what are ways we can support a new way of multi-DeFi applications that are being built? And how do we you know, better communicate to kind of new folks like, of what, can, what is possible with, with kind of DeFi and our, our new superpowers? You kind of buy you know, the, the idea was out of the repository, those standard libraries that provide kind of the, the building blocks for, for decentralized financial. And that itself is kind of you know, the resource to, to demonstrate what is possible out there. And if then projects are like referencing each other using those standard libraries or referencing the <laughs> resources using those resources, that is the ultimate kind of demonstrator of what's actually possible in um, the world where we share standards, language, and even in the library. Yeah. I mean, that's the best kind of thing. Yeah, that makes mm -hmm. sense. I think like a good takeaway, hopefully, from this is if we can create some sort of working group 
around you know what about this so that this is not just a conversation of you know things a wish list of things we that would be nice to have that stays within this room but something that gets taken you know and actually implemented in a while or, and worked on in a while and I think that these are like the beginnings of potential solutions for issues that we are kind of facing individually as teams and it is something that we as DeFi can start working on collectively together. So if it makes sense then we can potentially create a telegram group or you know, we can chat after and start coordinating uh, kind of after this. So um, I don't know how much time we have but that, I think that would be a good step forward. I think what could be kind of interesting is like an unconference of sorts because we all kind of have our own things that we're interested in. So like, if there is another event, say like ETH Denver or something like that, we could all get together and have like an unconference where people just propose stuff they want to talk about. Um, and I think that can get a wider community on the same page with that, and then move forward with some more specific stuff, whatever that might look like. Um, I think that might be better way to go about it. Because we already have like Telegram channels, we already have all that type of stuff. Um, maybe there's some work we can do in the meantime for sure, but I think getting people in the room together um, and having them talk about the piece, the portions that they're really interested in um, would be pretty <laughs> beneficial. We need some concrete kind of like next, yeah. next step or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, uh, that's kind of all I got here. Uh, I think that we talked about a lot of really great stuff, and it seems that you know, we have some potential action items that come out of it. So, uh, I mean, if anyone who like is interested in kind of in, in what this in kind of making this a reality, like let's let's chat afterwards, and you know we'll get connected, and uh, hopefully maybe we can do an conference in the future, and you know maybe we can start discussions on how to you know, start brainstorming or continue brainstorming or what implementation details could potentially look like. Um, and uh, I definitely appreciate y'all you know, bearing with a different format uh, for, for this breakout session, which is a lot different from uh, many, many of the other ones that at least I've been at today.